Hi, I'm Jenny Shampoo. I'm the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with Devin Jensen. Devin is the executive editor of the BYU Religious Studies Center, and he also regularly publishes and presents on church history topics. He recently co-edited the book Battlefields to Temple Grounds, Latter-day Saints in Guam and Micronesia. Today, we're looking at some of the very earliest chapters in the Book of Mormon, 1st Nephi 1 through 5, and the piece we're looking at is by CCA Christensen, and it shows Lehi's family leaving Jerusalem. Now, last week, we introduced you to this whole um, panel, this whole panorama um, with 11 panels on it, um, and today we're just looking at this one panel to dive in a little deeper. Um, we call it the, the untitled um, Dimmick Huntington panorama. So, Devin, can you tell us who was Dimmick Huntington and how was he connected with CCA Christensen? Certainly. Dimmick Huntington was an early convert to the church and was a drum major in the Nauvoo Legion, was very involved. He was one of the people arrested for the uh, destruction of the printing press. He was very involved in, with Joseph Smith. When they came west, he, um, he, he basically was an interpreter uh, mm. for the Shoshone and Ute and Paiute languages. Okay. He, in, in fact, he created an early dictionary, 1853 dictionary. That's one of the earliest oh. dictionaries we, th <laughs> we have of these Numic languages. Okay. And so he was really interested in teaching the gospel to the indigenous peoples of Utah. And so he said, I want to create, um, I want to create a, a panorama or kind of a teaching scroll mm -hmm. that would be useful to teach the various groups and to orient them to these concepts, the Book of Mormon mm -hmm. story, but he wasn't a painter. So he asked CCA Christensen to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, CCA was an early, um, he, he, he did painting of mostly theater props yeah. and uh -huh. backgrounds um, and uh, among other things. And he had studied at the Danish Academy of Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he uh, had this interesting background that very few other immigrant uh, Latter-day Saints had. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so he agreed to do this. And so this scene, Lehi's family leaving Jerusalem, is really an interesting scene because you have the walls of Jerusalem in the background. Uh -huh. You have this uh, symbolic portrayal of them entering the wilderness. And so there's an immediate transition there. But then you have these interesting choices. <laughs> Look at the, the costumes, for example. Um, you have these kind of interesting leggings, you have these yeah. robes, you have the fringe on uh, Lehi's um, yeah. uh, upper yeah. uh, <laughs> on por his portion sleeve, of his yeah. uh, mm -hmm. sleeve there. Mm -hmm. And then you have these interesting moccasin looking things. Mm -hmm. um, and you have the knapsacks, they're carrying their possessions with them. We know mm -hmm. from the Book of Mormon that they, they left their, their, their home their um what is it what else does it say it says their silver and gold uh -huh. their and, land yes their uh -huh. land uh -huh. and they took with them and mm -hmm. it names them by, by sariah and laman and lemuel and sam and nephi and mm -hmm. so so these are the the individuals shown here my wife said as we were looking at this sariah is turning away from us is she oh. expecting <laughs> Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, um, because we know that Jacob was born in the wilderness. Uh -huh. We know that daughters were born at yeah, some point during right. the journey. Yeah. They're mentioned in the, in the New World for the first time. So we're basically getting orientation um, to, to this family that's going to be very important. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this even painted? Yeah. <laughs> this connects with the Dimmick Huntington question. Okay. This is to help them understand mm -hmm. the origins of the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And so to, to, help, um, to help them understand this to link the Bible story with the Book of Mormon story mm -hmm. and to connect the, um, the story that's happening in Jerusalem with the story in the Americas. Okay. So it's all orienting. I think it's also interesting that we have a bow and arrow. Um, we know that's mentioned in the Book of Mormon text, but uh, that would have been resonant with the indigenous tribes here oh, in Utah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a dagger suggesting maybe um, a foreshadowing of the sword of Laban yeah. that they're going to later right. acquire. Right. Um, so. Anyway, some, some interesting uh, symbolic things. Of course, the dog. The dog, <laughs> yeah. the dog is interesting. The dog. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to look at this up. Uh, I, I was looking at it. looks like domesticated pets, such as sheepdogs, were, um, were ab about that right era. That may have been a little bit early for them, but they are mentioned in Isaiah and others. So that's very possible yeah. that Lehi's family could have had a, a dog. Oh, that's really interesting. I just feel like it makes it so relatable to oh, yeah. see this family, even with their family dog, and headed out with so few possessions. Um, I know in the scriptures, it, 
Nephi takes care to list. He says we take our our tents and our provisions and our family, and that's it. And um, and on off they go. Um, on the costuming, I just think it's such a fascinating conglomeration of maybe some new world elements like the fringe or the moccasins, but then also CCA is clearly drawing on these old world elements too, of like the shoe, I mean, Nephi shoes in particular almost look like a Louis the Fourteenth kind of a thing. Um, and then these kind of Roman, maybe pleated togas or skirts and robes. And um, it's just a, a really fascinating mix that I feel like CCA drawing on what he knows having lived in Europe and now living in this new frontier in America, in Utah, um, is trying to show something exotic, right, with the, with the visual vocabulary that he has. Um, why, why, do you, why is it that this piece isn't as familiar to us today? Oh, great question. So this uh, particular panorama was passed down from Dimmick Huntington's family to mm. George Washington Hill. Mm. George Hill was also a missionary along with Dimmick Huntington okay. and was very involved with the conversion of the Shoshone people. Mm. Um, and so, so he was the natural heir uh, yeah. uh, and successor to Dimmick Huntington. Well, that passed from person to person down their line for many uh, mm. generations. And then um, in uh, the 2000s, I'm not sure the exact year, um, Marlon K. Jensen, uh, mm. our church historian and yeah. recorder, was approached by somebody, a classmate, at a 50th uh, <laughs> high school reunion and said, we have in our family a CCA Christensen panorama. Would you like to see this? Wow. And so he said, oh, I'd be delighted. And so mm. uh, they began to look at this panorama and look at the scenes and analyze the provenance, where did this come mm. from? And, and so... Um, about the time, just after they acquired this, Steve Olson at the Church History Museum said, I'm re really interested in uh, knowing more about this story. Yeah. We've compiled some things. Would you like to write about this? Oh. And so I worked with yeah. Laura uh -huh. uh, Hurtado and uh -huh. we, we fleshed this out for Pioneer Magazine and said, yeah. this is what we know about the, the panorama. It was very oh. interesting to study it yeah. because it is still being housed at the Church History Museum mm -hmm. and is not on display anywhere. Right. And so this is a, a scene that fortunately you have portrayed in your catalog. And yeah. it, because of this, lots of people can appreciate this. Oh, well, thanks. Well, Devin, you were the person who actually first introduced me to these images after you had found them and done this great research on them. And um, that Pioneer magazine issue is terrific. Um, loved all the work you did on that. Um, and I just think it's, it's wonderful to recover our very earliest um, Latter-day Saint engagements with the Book of Mormon in the art, right? This is, this is really one of the first times that someone is looking at the Book of Mormon and thinking, how do I put this in art, right? And make, like you said, make it something that a variety of people could see and understand. In fact, CCA Christensen is probably our most prolific 19th century yes. Latter-day Saint he artist is, who's yeah. portraying these religious <clears throat> themes. Um, because of him, we have these early depictions. And yes, you see some European <clears throat> influence in there. But we have something that is a yeah. treasure. And, yeah. and think about all the European masters who put the, their own culture in the time of Christ. Yeah, um, right. it's, a, it's a similar sort of put myself in the painting mm. and try to make, make sense of, of the world around yeah. me. Yeah. Do you feel like, does this um, portrayal of the scene make you think any differently about the idea of this family going out from Jerusalem? I definitely Jerusalem? think that mm -hmm. the lightness of the provisions uh, makes me feel very vulnerable at yeah. how vulnerable their yeah. situation was. I think about the family dynamics. I think about Soraya, how she traveling, um, how is she expecting? Yeah. I think about the, um, the very harsh uh, environment they are about to enter and the difficulty they're going to experience over mm -hmm. the next a uh, few weeks and months, and and then I think uh, about as traveling across the sea. Right. Um, yeah. We, you know, one interesting thing about this, and you, and we, and we were thinking about this earlier, is this is a bridge scene. Mm -hmm. You have this scene of them in Jerusalem, but the scene just before it is Noah's Noah's flood. Right. And so you have the water scene mm -hmm. there, and then the scene that 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 comes right after this is Nephi being tied to the to the mast mm -hmm. of the ship as they're going, and so you you, you see this voyage and you see right. the water and you see that maybe connecting the dots yeah. between the two the old world and the new world that's really interesting
Now, CCA actually did, um, this one is from 1871 to 1875, somewhere in there. And then in 1890, he did another series of Book of Mormon paintings, and he did the same scene, but it's a little bit different. What, what do you see as the big differences here? So I love this because this shows his development as an artist. Mm. Um, the other one is more of a basic uh, portrayal, but I like the depth you see. You see Jerusalem far in the background, mm. just hinted at, yeah. and then you see the camels suggesting more, uh, uh, you know, a, a more uh, complex um, portrayal of the voyage. Um, you see uh, interesting... Um, I, I don't know what that uh, that saddle sort of arrangement is. I know. But, <laughs> I was wondering that too. <laughs> but it's it's yeah. interesting. You've got a child in there in this yeah. one as opposed to the other one, suggesting maybe Jacob or maybe yeah. a, a daughter. Um, and then you've got um, Nephi kind of pointing the way. You've got his also his bow there. He's yeah. got the the blue and yellow. Yeah, you know, yeah. suggesting in that as you said in the series, um, that's how he's portrayed. And he then is, you've got yeah. probably Lehi over here. Mm -hmm. Now th those clothes, these clothes look a little bit more refined, and maybe he's had yeah. some time to think about what the Middle Eastern clothes would have looked like. So it looks like maybe yeah. he thought this through um, a little more. Um, so yeah, those are some things. Th and and of course the foliage is a lot more developed. Yes, and it in is, the yeah. previous one, it's just kind of okay. Here's a tree. Here's a tree. Right. Now you've got a little bit of a forest happening. Yeah, you know the this sort of. Um, covering that Soraya and and who is this maybe Jacob <laughs> in there um I almost it almost reminds me of like a Conestoga wagon kind of a situation mm -hmm. and maybe CCA is thinking about that and um drawing parallels between the journey that his own people had across the American wilderness um to get to the promised land too Yes, and I'm glad you brought that up because uh, he was, he did immigrate across the, mm -hmm. the U.S. and was a handcart pioneer yeah, in yeah. 1857. And so yeah. he, he is a great portrayer of that journey across yeah. the wilderness. And right. so um, it probably would have resonated with him to think of Lehi's family traveling across a, a great wilderness and making his way to a promised land, which is yeah. essentially what CCA did as well mm -hmm. and his family. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you want to add? Um, I am so grateful that we have these early portrayals. These are among the earliest Book of Mormon portrayals that we yeah. have. And because of these, we have a, a little bit of a keepsake that, we would, that would otherwise be lost to us. Um, they help us envision how the people of that time mm -hmm. were trying to understand the voyage mm -hmm. uh, from, the, from the old world and trying to connect the dots with the indigenous people of Utah mm -hmm. in a way that they, would, they could understand the, the baptismal covenant they were to make. Oh, I love that. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. And thanks for joining us today. Of course, you're welcome.